you know what I'm saying? Because I did uh, record it for Sugar Hill. Um, you know, because of Dallas C. You know, I met Dallas C. I met Dallas C down the street, for, you know, from my block. He was, I think he just got on the train, got off in Brooklyn, and was just walking around, and he was giving out the records, um, high-powered rap. He was just giving them out. And that's how I ran into him. He was giving me a record. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then we just end up talking, blah, blah, blah. And that's how I got to know that, you know, how I got to meet Dow C. And then he introduced me to the rest of the Crash crew. And I used to go up to the Bronx to hang out with him and all that. And that's how I ended up doing a song for him at Sugar Hill Records. And, um, and everybody else, okay, like Madonna. I never met Madonna. I, was, I just did a remix. Mm. Um, I did a remix for Kashif. I met Kashif because we was in the studio together, you know, working on the remix. Um, who else? I mean, I'll, I'll be, sh I'll be sure. I'll be sure. Oh man, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to sound okay because. Because you want to know how it was working with I'll Be Sure, I ain't got no choice but to tell the truth. That's what we're here for. We love the stories. <laughs> Exclusive. Well, you know, I'm, it's not, I'm not beefing. I'm not upset or nothing. I'm just going to tell you what happened. Put it that way. So I'll Be Sure was working on his album. He wanted a song from me, right? My brother, Rob, is the one that hooked that up. Right, so I said, okay, I came up with a track. Right, it was around, um, I think it was around Thanksgiving, something like that. But Al B was in California, right? So, you know, he had me go in the studio, lay the track down, and when he got back from California, he had put the vocals down. So I said, okay, went in the studio. Lay down the track, bye bye bye. So now I was just waiting to hear from him, so I could, you know, finish up the song. Next thing I know, I think it was my brother Rob or somebody. I, I think it was my brother Rob. They handed me his "I'll Be Sure" album. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe he didn't use it, right? Because I never went into the studio and finished it, so maybe he didn't use it. So I got the CD, right? And I was listening to the CD and I heard my track. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it ended up being produced by I'll Be Sure, blah, blah, blah. And all I did was the track. He never. <laughs> so that's what happened with I'll Be Sure. I've never met I'll Be Sure. So I he didn't I give you, be, huh? he, he didn't give you credit for the track. Yeah, he gave me credit for the track, but I I suppose it was the track and I was supposed to do the production. Gotcha. But he didn't give me he didn't give me credit for the production because I didn't produce it. He did. <laughs> 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 he just went in the studio and did the song so it could right. be produced by him. Crazy. And um another situation like that happened to me too with you know, rest in peace, um, Puff Johnson, right? I went in the studio, laid down the track, right? I was dealing with um, Randy Jackson that worked at Sony, the bass player, Randy Jackson. Not from the Jackson 5, Randy Jackson. From the uh, uh, America's Idol? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's the one that wanted me to do a, a song for Puff Johnson. So I went in, I laid down the track, Right? And then he was going to arrange for Puff Johnson to come in and lay down the vocals, blah, blah, blah. Next thing I know, <laughs> the song is done. Cause he, and it's produced by Randy Jackson. Wow. So I only got the credit for the track. <laughs> Did you ever have any conversations with Randy afterwards? No, I've never seen him after that. Wow. I've never seen him after that. And to me, 
And to me, when people do stuff like that, the song never comes on. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anytime people do like that, it, 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 the song never comes off. Right. Crazy. <laughs> Uh, like I said, we could be here till midnight talking about your lengthy discography, for, so maybe we'll leave another portion for part two in the future. But can you tell us what your greatest accomplishment has been throughout the years, musically? Musically, my biggest accomplishment? Well, as good as hip-hop, you know, me doing hip-hop was, you know, with, with Sean and Special Ed and Chub Rock, my biggest you know, accomplishment was with Color Me Bad. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Pop music is so far is the only thing that really paid me. You know what I'm saying? And it went six times platinum. And I had five songs on the album, which one of the songs went gold, you know, All For Love. You know, so my biggest accomplishment is is calling me bad, actually. You know, Very because as big as um as big as special ed um both albums were, I don't have a gold plaque for that. It never went gold. Profile they stopped. They stopped it at four hundred ninety thousand. <laughs> right. Every time, as big as Chubb's album, the one was, it never went gold. It. it Select said that it, um, you know, that they shipped out 500,000, but they got returns. So they can't certify it gold. So up to, to right now, in 2021, it is still not, it is still not certified gold. I don't have a plaque, but the only thing I got for that is that poster right there. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? And I got that, I got this billboard chart that three records on that album was number one on the on the hip-hop billboard chart one two three all three <laughs> all three number ones never right. went gold. crazy <laughs> you know what i'm saying so right i have to say i have to say um you know color me bad uh you're very seldom seen uh kind of behind the scenes uh for all of your long term fans. Can you catch us up on what howie T has been up to and what he's currently working on um after hip hop after recording back in ninety five I was working at Warner Brothers in Burbank you know Warner brothers record as a as a an r so I signed um I signed this guy named um, um, Little Indian. I signed a group called Raw Breed. These guys from the Bronx. I don't know if you heard of Raw yep, Breed. Yep, yep. They had that yeah. rat, rabbit on the cover or something like that. Yeah, and they had, and their first single was Carlito's Way. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that, and um, and the thing was, unfortunately, we got caught. And uh, and uh, you know, Warner Brothers was trying to get rid of the Black Division and the Rock, alternative rock or rock, something like that. So they wasn't giving us the budget to do, you know, the right promotion and you know, and really push the artists and stuff like that because I wanted to sign Black Eyed Peas, mm. <laughs> and they didn't want to give me the budget, so I got outbidded by Sony. Mm. But I wanted to sign Black Eyed Peas because I went to a, a showcase they did. And was this on, was this back when they were at Band Clan? They, I don't think they were signed at the time, and they were doing a showcase trying to get signed. Okay. They did a showcase on Sunset Boulevard, and I went to that showcase. You know, when they performed, and I was like, "Yo, these guys is hot." So I, I don't remember who it was. I, What's the light skin guy name? Uh, Apple D App. I think that's his name. Oh, uh, he gave me a demo. You know, he gave me one of the demo tapes. Oh, Taboo, maybe. And I took it to Warner Brothers. You know, and we had an end on meeting. I played the tape. I was like, "Yo, I want to sign these guys." Bah 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 bah. 
and they, you know, and they didn't want to give us the budget. So I didn't get to sign them. Wow. So then after that, I ended up leaving on one of the brothers that I was doing this thing called a needle drop. Needle drop is like when you watch, um, you know, TV or listen to commercials on radio and time they do an advertisement, the music in the background, those little production companies that put those commercials together, get the music from somebody. I was one of those somebody's. So when, um, when Tara Bank was first coming out with American's Top Model, something like that, the promotion they were doing, the music that was in that promotion, I did. Mm. Um, the movie Belly, you know, it was out in the movies. So when it was time to put the movie on a DVD, they couldn't get, they couldn't get um, permission to use D'Angelo song. That was, that was Pie. Right, that was in the movie when the girls are dancing on the pole and stuff like right. that. So they needed to replace it. So if you watch Belly on the DVD, when it comes to that part, the music that's playing, I did that. Wow. I did the replacement. Um, there's a lot of 7-Eleven commercials, the music in the background. I did those, you know, so I was just, I was doing needle drops. Now I'm just doing tracks, you know, to listen to in the car, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Um, right. I'm working on, I'm working on this song with, you know, Crystal Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm working on a, uh, another song for um, Chubbs. But otherwise than that, I just do tracks and, you know, I make a little playlist, throw it in my car <laughs> and just vibe. You know, because I got, always got to keep my chops up. Right. Uh, after all these years, do you think Howie T has got the credit he deserves? I don't know. I mean, I don't hear, I, I don't hear nobody <laughs> saying that I got the credit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, hey, I mean, my songs, um, just the two of us is still being played. I mean, being being used. And Girl Trip. Um, what else? Um, I Got It Made was in the documentary, When They See Us. It starts off with special ed song. You know, so these songs, you, you, you know, they drop, you know, my songs that I did in, you know, different movies. I'd, um, there's this girl I worked with called, her name is Cherie. We did an album. One of the songs were on Best Man soundtrack. I mean, it was in the movie too. Um, yeah, so, you know, s s stuff of mine still being played. Right. But, and um, let me tell you something else that's foul. <laughs> let me squeeze in this foul thing. Um, Petra. You remember Patra and Yo-Yo? Yeah, I remember call. Patra. Yeah, I did that song, Romantic Call. Oh, wow. Right? So, um, and this is also one of the reasons why I said, you know, my success is with <laughs> Color Be Bad and nothing else that I did. Because um, I did that song for Patra. Sony gave me, I think, like $25,000 to do that song. Right? The album, album went gold. The 45 went gold, right? If I was to log in to Sony Records on the internet right now and look at my statement, it still says, um, uh, what they call it? Oh, man. It still says, oh, man. I forgot the word. Oh man, what they call it when, when uh, um, the record label hasn't made their money back yet? Recoup. Non recoup. Still unrecoup. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, 
Did you try and pay me down and make $25,000 back <laughs> on, on Romantic Call? Yeah, that was everywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it still says on recoup. So I never got paid from Patra. I never got paid from that song. Oh, you never got paid? Right, I never got paid. The only thing, money I got paid was to do the song, the 25000 That's it. After that, my statements keep saying on recoup. To At this least day, if I was to sign on right now, it's still saying. <laughs> And these three rule number four thousand and eighty, right? Uh, and the same thing, the, the, the same thing with um, same thing with Little Vicious. Ah, uh, freaks. No, um, Glock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they put wow. out that single. I did two songs for, um, for Little Vicious. Glock was his um, I think was his second single. Yeah. I'll so do the song. Any uh, court battles? Uh, you just let no, it go? Yeah. Whatever, man. I ain't going to spend my money to take them to court. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, most of these record labels are ran by gangsters. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So unless you get a gangster lawyer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? want to wait a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. To, you know what I'm saying? Spending your money, trying to get money. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you might spend ten thousand dollars to get two. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Well, legend, I do appreciate the opportunity uh for letting me give you your flowers and your uh proper dues. Uh and just to hear you. We haven't heard from you in a while. So thank yes, you sir. for allowing us to be, uh hear you and what you've been go uh what you've been doing throughout the years. Um like I said, uh, congratulations on the 30th anniversary for Chub Rocks The One. Thank you, sir. Does it seem like 30 years? No, I definitely don't. <laughs> it don't. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. Any uh, last words from your for your longtime fans that's been wondering what's up with Howie T? Oh, man, I'm just doing the do, man. And um, um, as far as... My word is is to these you know producers that's out there, man. They gotta you, you know they gotta bring hip hop back. Cause what's out there to me is not hip hop. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody sound alike. Everybody's rapping and talking about the same thing. And um, I I, I just can't buy. There's there's nothing musically that's inspiring me to. You know what I'm saying? Want to jump back out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because back in right. the days, when we hear like, oh, you know, a uh, uh, Pete Rock or an Easy Mo B track or a Third Eye track and all that, you'd be like, oh, let me get in the studio and start banging out something. You right. There ain't no producer out there that's inspiring me to do nothing. I'm inspiring myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Or I just listen back to some old school stuff. And make and allow that to inspire me to do you know, you know to do what I do. But and then we definitely need DJs back out there, man. As far as in groups and you know what I'm saying, there has to be an artist that you know what I'm saying that promote their DJ. Right. You know what I'm saying. We need some DJ songs out there. You know what I'm saying? Because DJing is big still. You know what I'm saying. Even though they, you know, they DJing at the club and, you know what I'm saying, my boy, um, be nice, you know what I'm saying, the club quarantine and all that, you know, DJs are still important, you know what I'm saying? Right. But DJs, as far as hip hop, started with MCs, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We right. need that back. It ain't not, not there like that, man, at all. There's no scratching on records or nothing like that. It's just dead. Facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, to all the D I mean, to all the DJs slash producers, you know what I'm saying? They need to start being creative again. Right. Well, start being creative. <laughs> not again. It's not like they were creative before. But all these new cats, man, they need otherwise than that, all my all the producers and DJs from my generation. Good music don't have an age, man. There's no age on that. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. So don't feel like, oh man, I'm too old if you don't. No, no, you're not. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Good music is good music, no matter no matter if it came from a, a 12 year old or a 65 year old. Good music is good music. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they need to, you know what I'm saying? We need to get that excitement and that fun back in, in hip hop. Hip hop right. is not fun no more. I remember when, um, you know, um, um, women in hip hop was like, oh man, this industry is dominated by the guys, you know, and they won't let us even get our foot in, you know, we just get like a little drop here, or an MC light, a little Queen Latifah here. Most of the stuff that I'm hearing about is by women. And look what they're <laughs> talking about, bro. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? They're right. Dis- they just cold disrespected themselves, man. I'm like, <laughs> y'all wanted to be, you know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all wanted to be equal with guys, and that's what y'all decide to do? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We need more Queen Latifahs out there, man, and we need some more MC Lights. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the stuff that they out there rapping about, bro. I'm like, I okay, already know. Y'all got y'all foot in, and this is what y'all want to rap about? Right. Cause most of the, because most of the artists that I'm hearing about is females. So y'all got the floor right now. <laughs> and this is what y'all want to do with y'all opportunity? You know what I'm saying? I, I, um, I ran across a, a, a video clip. I think it was I, th- I think it was Cardi B. She, she was playing one of her songs, you know, that had the profanity, and she saw her little baby coming out, and she was like, ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you was rapping about good stuff, you wouldn't have to do that. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Why wouldn't you want your child to enjoy, you know what I'm saying, mommy's creation, mommy's work? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, we but need to get it back. Yeah, man. I pre- yeah, we need to get it back, bro. Like I said, I appreciate everything you've done for the culture. Uh, do you have uh, any social media you'd like to give out there so everybody can keep up uh, with man, how we I, see? I'm always in the background of social media, man. Right. We noticed. <laughs> we noticed. So that's why this was so... Uh, if you uh, go to my IG page, you'll see zero posts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in the background. I always check out what people are saying and what people are doing. But I respect I that. I don't put nothing out there. No doubt. Thank you so much once again. This has been episode 125. That's a legendary Howie T. I'm the journalist is Sarah. Thank you so much, Howie. Yeah, it's all good, partner. See you again in the future. Yes, sir. All right. Salute. Salute. Wow, what a history lesson. Shout out to everybody who uh, joined tonight. Shout out to DJ Top Speed, Rob Swift, of course, my man Prince Lowe, Crystal Johnson, DITC, Little Shine. Let's link up. We got some history to talk. Uh, My mom and dad, of course, and everybody else who fell through. Happy Easter. Got a lot more uh, interesting interviews coming up. Like I said, This has been episode 125 on an Easter Sunday. Appreciate you guys. See you and have a good and blessed work week. Salute.